Good morning everyone and happy Thanksgiving to everybody and today I'm going to make a special treat and that is my chocolate cranberry hazelnut biscottis and yes I just throw the kitchen sink in here but they are deadly everyone loves them um, so I'm gonna make a batch this year I'm gonna eat the ends myself yum yum Okay, so the recipe starts off with two and three quarter cups of flour. This is for anyone who wants the exact measurements as much as I can give it. So, two and three quarter cups of flour, one and a half cups of granulated sugar, so flour, sugar, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, got that here. One and a quarter teaspoon of, and I'm trading that off. I'm not putting cinnamon in this at all. I'm putting cocoa. So, yeah, probably one tablespoon of cocoa. <clears throat> a teaspoon of salt. Let me get my salt. Okay, we do want a little bit of salt in there. I'm just amassing all my ingredients on the table now. And two eggs, which I've already broken the shells and put them in this bowl. A quarter cup of milk, which I've got here. Quarter cup of milk. Some vanilla. And this is my homemade vanilla. So how much vanilla? About a teaspoon. I may add a little bit more. And, you know, the, the recipe I have calls just for so much of the, the um, nuts and and cranberries so I really don't go by the recipe there but they ask for oh I guess two-thirds cup of hazelnuts or whatever you want to use actually this is a different recipe that I've kind of altered myself and I literally end up putting one cup of chocolate chip a cup of cranberries and a cup of hazelnuts now you can just add as much or as little of this as you prefer. As I said, I prefer to make them chock full. So right now I'm going to put all the dry ingredients into my mixing bowl. And we'll start off with, okay. This is a half measuring cup because this jar will not allow me to put a full measuring cup in there. So we want one and a half cups of sugar so three of these. Okay, that's my sugar. I can get this and put it out of the way. And we want two and three quarter cups of flour. So for five and a bit. Five and a bit. Okay, so that is my flour. So, one teaspoon of salt. Salt. And what else? My dry ingredients. What am I missing here? Cocoa. And my baking powder. So, the baking powder I need. Two and a half teaspoons. One, two, and a bit. Okay, that's all my dry ingredients other than my cocoa, which I'm going to be overly generous with. This adds color and flavor to my biscottis, and I'm huge heaping tablespoon and a bit more. So more like two tablespoons of cocoa, but you can add less. That's just my preference is to add more. Okay, so my dry ingredients have been added and I'm just gonna mix these all up. If I can get this thing to, there we go. And we're going to add 
the butter and mix it all up. And at this point we are going to mix some of the wet ingredients. So I've got my two eggs. Let's push this back a bit. Got my two eggs. My milk. Might have done this the other way around. Let me pour this back into the measuring cup. Okay, they're all in the measuring cup now. The two eggs and the milk and oh, a splash of vanilla. Perfect. So we're going to whisk this together. And then we're going to add it to the dry mixture. Okay, now comes the tricky part. <laughs> well, not so tricky, let's see. I'm going to add about a cup of hazelnuts. And about a cup of cranberries here. And I'm just kind of measuring mentally. And lots of chocolate chips. And we'll gently mix this up now. And after that has been thoroughly mixed, we're going to take this out of the bowl. Now I do have a cutting board prepared here. There we go. At this point I am going to separate all this and put it on the cutting board to shape it into lobes. making sure everything's good and mixed up first. Okay, a little more flour here. Personally, I cut this in half and then each half into thirds. And I should be preparing my trays right now. Okay, I've got a couple of um, trays lined with parchment paper. So now I'm just going to split this into three separate logs. Try to get them pretty much the same size if I can. Now I could weigh these but I mean just trying to get an approximate anyway is all that we need. So we're going to roll these into logs. And then I just put them equal distance apart on my baking trays. 
Now I do have my oven preheated to 350. Yep, it's up to temperature. And these are actually baked twice. So bake them once and then they're taken out, sliced up and baked a second time. But we'll get to that later. Now, sometimes, well, normally I put almonds in here as well, but I have all these hazelnuts that uh, I love and I wanted to take advantage of that. Okay, so we've got the first one done. There we go. Now we'll split the second one into thirds as well. Okay, there we have it. They are ready to go in the oven. Okay, at this point I've put them in the oven for 30 minutes for the first time. After 30 minutes have passed, we'll bring them back out here and we'll slice them up. Okay, my timer is just about to go off. I think I've got 24 seconds here. Now, the Scotties are twice baked. Now you can eat them after the first bake. Oh, well, here's my timer. And as I was saying, you can eat them right now, but we're making biscottis. We're not making cookies. If you wanted cookies, you could cut that up and eat it now. So I'm going to gently remove these. Now they're still hot now. They always say to wait till they cool before cutting. I always find that I have much better success cutting it when it's hot. I also like to use, oh, oh that pan's hot, this vegetable pear. It's not heavy, it's, it's a light one. Um, some like to use butter knives or, or sorry, bread knives that have serrated edges, but I find that this works better for me with a quick um, slice and I really should have made these wider to make them longer and of course I'm going to eat the end <laughs> ready to go back into the oven for now I do it 10 minutes aside so 10 minutes um, and I turn down the temperature to 300 uh, let it bake for another 10 minutes and this pan is still hot but uh, it, it's bearable and then I turn them again and let them go another 10 minutes okay my timer has gone off these have been turned once already so one side was done this is the second side and I could turn my oven off and pull everything out and I do have um, a, a rack, a cookie rack there. So here we are ready to take them out of the hot pans and just put them on the cookie rack. Now let's see if I can just slide this over without burning myself. Well, that kind of worked. Well, here we are. The biscottis are all done and they're on a cooling rack uh, out of the hot trays. The oven's turned off. These have been turned. So they've been baked once. Then they were sliced. Then they were baked on one side for 10 minutes and then turned around and baked on the other side for 10 minutes. So I guess you could say they're baked three times. But at this point, uh, when they've cooled, they should be nice and firm and hard. And you can enjoy them um, with your coffee in the morning. Or you can put a couple of them in a clear cellophane bag with a pretty wrap. And they could be a st stocking st stuffer or just a Christmas treat on the table, which people can grab. Traditionally, I know that they're used as a <laughs> breakfast with coffee. 
but uh, these can be eaten at any time, believe me. Anyway, uh, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. This is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye for now.